Is the MPC-1 the ultimate hardware sequencer? Ah, tough question. Really? There are a lot of options out there. The Machine Plus by Native Instruments, the MC-707 Groovebox by Roland, the Electron Digitone, or the Octatrack Mark II made by Electron. How about the Deluge 3 by Synthstrom Audible? Of course, we can't leave out the MPC Live or the MPC X also made by Akai. Though they share the same software as the one, the hardware varies in some very distinct and meaningful ways, for sure. The options are plenty and we are currently living in a time where hardware groove boxes are back in vogue. Let's talk about me for a sec. I know, no one cares, but a bit of background can help you fit my opinions into the proper context. I am a keyboard player. As I was learning to play keys, the keyboard workstation played a pivotal role in most major and minor studios. The Yamaha EX5 and 7, and eventually the Motif series, or the Roland XP80, which evolved into their Phantom line of workstations, or the Cork Trinity, which evolved into the Triton. Keyboardists could track their instrumentation just using one box, their keyboard. The sequencers in these units were certainly cutting edge for their time. At the time, I could not afford a Yamaha Motif or Cork Triton or even a Roland XP80, but I desperately wanted a sequencer and my Elisa's QS7 didn't have one on board. So I purchased a Yamaha RM1X Groovebox. Now, this Groovebox was certainly catered towards the dance music industry, you know, just judging by its preset pattern styles and tone generator, but I never really used any of that stuff. I did, however, make full use of the 110,000 note sequencer. I used it to trigger sounds in my Alesis and I could finally compose full orchestrations with piano, horn, strings, synth leads, synth pads, organs, and so on. Fast forward 10, 15 years and I had owned and composed on several flagship workstations. Honestly, I had a sense that I'd graduated from using groove boxes to compose songs on that I had written or create backing tracks for live performances. I mean, after all, the only reason I purchased the Yamaha RM1X groove box is because I couldn't afford what I really wanted. Though I was 100% happy using my keyboards onboard sequencer, I could not ignore the music my colleagues were making using their digital audio workstations or DAWs. I secretly marveled at what they could do so quickly and easily with their computer's mouse and a keyboard controller. Their options were limitless and their power was only held back by the computers they were using. They had so many plugins and track and polyphony ceilings were a thing of the past for them. But I somewhat religiously held on to composing on my hardware. I mean, I was comfortable with it and I knew how to work around its limitations. However, as more opportunities to collaborate with other producers grew, I had to learn to use a DAW. So I started using Reaper reluctantly and well, I loved it. There soon after I purchased Ableton Live and it was a match made in heaven. I performed live quite a bit and now I had a DAW that was perfectly at home in the studio and in live performances. Add in a few essential soft synth suites made by uh, Native Instruments and Spectre Sonics and once again I was off to the races. Composing music never felt better, right? Wrong. While composing music on a DAW gave me what I needed as a producer, somehow the keyboard, mouse, and small MIDI controller didn't give me what I needed as a musician. I personally felt my creativity waning. Yes, I had all the power I needed, but the tactile feel of sequencing on my core Kronos or Triton Extreme was sorely missed. So I developed more of a hybrid setup, which is what I still use today for the most part. I would start my compositions using hardware and then move to a doll to put in my final edits effects and even switch out instruments if need be. I am neither squarely in the hardware or software camp. I use whatever I need to use in order to get the job done. Now, with that said, as I began using the sequencer on my Korg Kronos again after spending so much time using Ableton, the Korg now felt a bit like using cranks and levers. Tasks were tactile, which I loved, but certain things just felt unnecessarily laborious. The way the screen was organized felt cluttered. The filing and multi-sampling layouts were so complicated that I really shied away from performing such tasks. 
and God forbid I needed to change it or shift a few wrong notes after capturing such a good take, this was another task that felt suddenly laborious after becoming accustomed to the piano roll in Ableton and the touchscreen is essentially the same as the touchscreen from the Korg Trinity that was released in 1995. Now that we are headed into 2021 with all manner of cell phones and tablets, the Korg Kronos touchscreen feels more than a little dated. The Yamaha Modiex and Montage do provide a little relief in the workflow department when sequencing is concerned, but they lack the sheer power of the Korg Kronos. Upon release, the Yamahas didn't even have a sequencer on board. One was added as a result of user demand and that was added through an update. So it is designed with live performance in mind and speed was prioritized, not depth. When I needed speed and a tactile feel, I reached for the Yamaha. And when I needed depth, I reached for the Korg Chrome. Well, no, not the Korg. I reached for Ableton. And as I got faster in Ableton, once again, I started using hardware sequencers less and less in my workflow. You know, life is just different for me now than it was 20 some odd years ago. My job and my family responsibilities have grown considerably. I don't have the endless hours to tinker about when creating music. Furthermore, I've gone from being a serious hobbyist to a professional. People now pay me for what I produce and the fluidity of my workflow has taken precedence over many other things. There is something I really love about the tactile feel of creating music on a keyboard without a doll but I simply cannot do cranks and levers anymore, at least not on a regular basis. So I was using a little hardware in the creation stage and promptly I would switch over to using a doll to take advantage of the power that it offers. I never really got into drum machines, groove boxes, or production boxes of any kind. In fact, I didn't know very much about them at all. Until fairly recently, I thought an MPC was simply a drum machine catered towards hip hop producers. I knew that you could use the pads to play drums or trigger some samples. I knew that Akai had a loyal following of beat makers, but you know, I wasn't a beat maker. I was a keyboard player. And so any kind of groove box, sample box, production box, MIDI box, I simply didn't pay it any attention. If it was a box, I didn't look into it at all. After all, remember, I had graduated from using a box. And then Akai came out with the MPCX standalone unit. I saw the 10 inch touchscreen and how it behaved more like a cell phone or tablet. And there was the MPC Live with the 7 inch touchscreen and the same software as the X. These were hardware units that looked like they came out recently. They didn't appear to have that same cranks and levers flow I'd become accustomed to on my keyboard workstations. I was just starting to get into hip hop, house, trance, pop, and really all kinds of EDM music. Yes, I still played jazz, funk, classical, R&B, gospel, CCM, and such. And my core chronos, to be honest, is more than capable of playing that type of music, especially if we're talking about playing live. But when I heard the NPCs, they simply sounded more modern, or at least more suited for the aforementioned genres. I knew the NPCs could produce the sound I was looking for quickly, and easily. When the MPC-1 came out, I decided to pull the trigger and purchase it. It was more of a, an experimental purchase, truthfully. I was brand new to the MPC world and the beat making community. My creativity soared as I began working with the MPC-1. I found working with pads instead of keys actually opened up my musical mind to different possibilities. The shift in workflow was welcomed. Sampling wasn't the arduous task I had become accustomed to on the Korg Kronos or the Yamaha workstations past and present. My mind was blown. The MPC-1 is far more than a drum machine or a rudimentary beat making machine. A project can contain 128 sequences. A sequence can be up to 999 measures and contain 128 MIDI tracks. Also, the MPC offers eight audio tracks in standalone mode. Even with that, you can load audio samples of any kind and add them to the pads and trigger them just like you would any other internal sample. I can hook up a USB hub to the MPC and essentially control all of my hardware from the unit. The touchscreen works as advertised and the workflow is actually pretty fast because of all the buttons and knobs it comes equipped with. It has an auto multi-sampling mode which takes this painstaking tedious task and performs it 
on its own. I can record in a traditional linear fashion or engage in a loop-based recording session. Both work very well. I can lay down tracks very quickly just like I can with the Yamaha Montage, but I can edit very deeply just like I can with the Core Chronos. However, it is nowhere near as difficult because of the multi-touch screen with pinch to zoom functionality and a piano roll and grid features just like any DAW today. The best way for me to describe the NPC is as a DAW in a box. No, it is not as powerful as Ableton Live and the host of plugins I have for it, but for me, I find it far more tactile and fun to use. It feels more like an instrument and Ableton doesn't. And though it is tactile and fun, I feel it is far more intuitive and powerful than the onboard sequencers offered by Yamaha, Korg, Roland, and the like. Truth be told, I think that keyboard manufacturers could learn a lot from Akai as far as producing a powerful hardware sequencer. Now, a DAW in a box can be a good or bad thing, depending on who you ask. However, I don't actually mind using a DAW. I am not anti-DAWs, nor do I see people who use DAWs as lesser musicians or producers. I believe anything can become an instrument if a musician is using it for that purpose. I have seen some awesome spoon players and washboard players that create music. I never look down on someone playing spoons and tell them spoons are for eating, they are not instruments. So if a person uses a DAW and draws in their notes instead of playing them on a keyboard, more power to them. At the end of the day, most listeners couldn't care less how the music was produced. Now, I still use Ableton all the time, but I'm using my MPC-1 more and more. It serves as an external sequencer for my keyboards. I have it hooked up to a digital mixer, which has everything in my studio connected to it. I can record audio from my keyboards or MIDI. I can run my vocal mics through auto-tune, compressors, reverb, or whatever I want before it hits the MPC. I can create audio clips to be used as backing tracks that can be easily triggered from the pads during live performance. And because it is a hardware unit specifically optimized for music, I find it more reliable than software for live gigs. So the question is, is the MPC-1 the ultimate hardware sequencer? The truth of my answer is, I don't know. I haven't used all of them and I think everybody's workflow is different and what they are looking for is different. And so there is no ultimate external sequencer. But what I do know is that it is absolutely working for my workflow. You know, it's funny how things have come full circle. I thought I graduated from using boxes. Boy, was I wrong.